the scripture reading today uh, is the basis for Jackie's children's message from the New Testament, uh, Matthew 7, 24 through 29. Uh, Jesus speaking, everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was its fall. Now when Jesus had finished saying these words, the crowds were astounded at his teaching for he taught them that as one having authority and not as their scribes. The word of God for the people of God. Who's going to pray for the preacher today? Anybody? Thank you, Miss Kathy. You want to use Jackie's microphone? She's right here. Okay. You got two new knees. Ooh, show off. Two new knees. Can you all see me? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Heavenly Father, bless us this morning. You've blessed us by bringing us all together, getting us out and into your house. Please continue to bless Terry. Walk beside her when she needs it. Carry her when she needs that. You've given her challenges. Some people call them blessings to overcome. Enough challenges. Just let her work on fixing everything that you have challenged her with. Help her to continue to remember her mother in the best ways and get away from the sorrow. And please keep her as our pastor. She bestows so many blessings upon us and we learn so much from her. In your name we pray, amen. Amen, thank you. Well, how many of you had solid as a rock going through your heads when Jackie was up here? Okay, Toby did, so you two can do a duet this week if you want. How many of you had the other one in there, the wise and foolish builders? Lisa did. Anybody else think? You got to sing it. You know that, right? If we do this lesson, we have to sing the story. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock, and the rains came tumbling down. Oh, the rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the house on the rock stood fast. The foolish man built his house upon the rock sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the rains came tumbling down. Oh, the rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the house on the sand went splat. Everybody loves that part, right? The splat. But is this really a children's story? I don't think so. Jesus says, put your house on the rock and you're going to be wise if you do what? What does they say? It's like those who listen to my word, hear my word and listen, who do my word, who who listen to my teachings, who absorb them and let them live through them. They're like the wise man who built his house on a rock. Okay, then. So how would you define wise? How would you define wise? Caring, loving, those who seek God ahead of their own stuff, right? Those who act in accordance with good thought and common sense. Anybody here have common sense? Raise your hand if you have common sense. 
Kaylee's got her hand up. Kaylee has a lot of common sense. Some of you on this side are not sure, right? Okay, Kathy's got common sense. I know some of you have much common sense. So what about foolish? How do you define foolish? Lacking in common sense, right? Or self-centered, self-serving, things like that. I need two volunteers. Okay, Kayla, you come up. You want to bring somebody with you? I'm going to let her pick if nobody else volunteers. I need a grown-up with her. Come on, we need a volunteer. Come on. Okay. I'll make you look foolish, but some of you look okay. We're going to talk about the difference between a wise and foolish answer. You want to be wise or foolish? Okay. Hey, guys, let's go up on the roof of the church and parachute off. Good idea? No. Why not? You're going to die. Hey, Neil, she doesn't want to go. You want to go up on the roof with me and jump off? Sounds like fun, right? Okay, let's switch roles now. Now you get to be wise and you get to be foolish, okay? Let's see. Let's go down to the 7-Eleven. I bet that cashier is old and she won't see if we steal some candy. What do you say? Uh, you're no fun. What do you say? Only if you can get Skittles. <laughs> okay. Now let's switch from wise and foolish to childlike and childish. Is there a difference between being childlike and being childish? Okay, who wants, if you want to be childish, you get to be childish this time. You get to be childlike. Let's go play with that new kid in this house next door. What do you think? Okay. What do you think? Let's go play with that new kid in the house next door. No, I don't want to. Why not? But you're a kid. I don't want to eat ice cream. Okay. You can eat ice cream now. It's not lunchtime. You have an issue. You want to have ice cream now or after lunch? Well, if it's an option. <laughs> Sometimes childlike is, is meaning, yeah. Okay, thank you both. Let's give them a hand. I'm going to tell you a story, and God's going to get me because it's a real story about a real parishioner that I had. The lady was not exactly childlike. There was a Palm Sunday, and I had the bright idea of having Jesus ride through the town of Hedgesville, West Virginia, on a donkey. Jacques the donkey, the one who bit me the Christmas after that. But before he bit me and crushed my finger, he was my Palm Sunday donkey. We didn't know if he would like to be ridden, but Daniel got dressed up as Jesus and climbed on his back, and he apparently didn't mind being ridden at all, and he rode through the town of Hedgesville. And my choir was going to come into the church and say, come see, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, come and see, Hosanna in the highest, they were all waving palm branches. Now they did that, but afterwards, Miss Ann went to the council and said, that was the most ridiculous thing we've ever have to done in our lives. Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. I felt like a fool out there. I thought, no, you didn't look like a fool out there. You look like a fool now. But I didn't say that. I bit my tongue. But I thought, wow, what a response. And I was so downcast because I thought it was a great idea. Then I went next door to Mrs. Frances Duke, who has gone to live with Jesus now many years, one of the sweetest, kindest women I ever knew in my life. And she said, you'll never know what, you never guess what happened to me Sunday. So I was feeling very much alone, and I missed church so much, I looked out the window, and Jesus rode by on a donkey. So it was the best thing I ever saw in my life. She said, I felt like I had seen the Lord. And that's when I thought, yeah, sometimes you've got to go with what you think is right. One was childlike, Francis. One was childish, Miss Anne. Mm, Miss Anne. Now, we sang half-heartedly, because I started us out on the bass note, this, this is where children belong. This, this is where children belong, welcomed as part of the worshiping throng. Water, God's word, bread, and cup, prayer, and song. This is where children belong. This is where children belong. They belong in this congregation. They belong in this building. They belong in these seats. They belong in the pews. They belong up front. They belong as acolytes. They belong as liturgists. They belong in this church. What do we have to do to become a kid-welcoming church, though? What do we have to do? Again, not a rhetorical question. What do we have to do to be a welcoming church? 
children. Be more childlike. There's a good answer. Not childish, but childlike. And I have seen adults be very childish when kids come to church. There's a lady who helps take care of me. Her name is Marquita. She was the one who came when I broke my shoulder and helped me out, and then she took care of my mom one day a week. Now she's helping me out again while my knee, until I get my knee fixed, doing things that I can't do, like making a bed and things like that she does for me. She has a child with full-blown autism. She hadn't been to church in a couple years, and someone said to her, bring him to my church. And she said, but people will fuss. They said, nobody's going to say a word if he comes. We don't care what he does. He will be fine. She went to the church, and guess what? Her son immediately started acting up, acting out, making noise, and nobody said a word. Nobody batted an eye. Nobody looked at them like, oh, you all know that look, right? Let me see her. Let me see her look of, oh, your child is making noise. Get your kid out of here. Let me see that look on your faces. Some of you have made that face, I bet, sometimes, right? I know that there's there are issues with people needing to hear and things like that, but we have got to be more loving toward children when they come to church. Because you know what kids do? They act like kids, don't they? How many of you ever had a kid in church, your own child? How many of you just wanted to sometimes crawl under the pew and hide? Same hands are up. How many of you have a horror story that you can't even tell here? It's so bad what your kid did in church. I told you all, when I was 10, I joined the choir, so my mother couldn't reach me anymore. My mother's arms were like Stretch Armstrong, you know, the doll that could just reach. She'd punk me in the side of the head, and I joined the choir, and I was like, la, 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 la. <laughs> and I turned out okay. I have turned out okay, I hear. I'm in church all the time now, right? <laughs> But we've got to become a church that loves children more than we love our own comfort sometimes. We've got to be a church that welcomes children. And it doesn't matter how much noise they make. No, we don't want to. You know, when they're purple and their mouth is open and ah, you hit certain decibels, it's time to take them for a walk outside. But if they squawk a little or fuss a little or unwrap a candy, we've got to be more tolerant because if we don't, guess what's going to happen in 50 years? This church will not be here. Tell you the truth right now, if we do not learn how to welcome children into this fellowship, this church will not be here. Because in 50 years, I plan to be with Jesus full time. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm not going to be here anymore. But we've got to tell the story in ways that people understand that they're loved. They're, they're so loved. I want to let you know a little secret. Pastors do not like to do weddings. Give me a funeral over a wedding any day. Because you've heard, you know the word portmanteau, right? Where you put two words together, like bride and zilla. There's a bridezilla, there's a mother of the bride, the mob scene, mother of the bridezilla. You don't have corpsezilla or widowerzilla or widowzilla. People are, you know, when you're doing their funeral, they're just sort of lying there, very calm and peaceful. Weddings are not calm and peaceful. And people don't come to church to get married for Jesus. They come because you've got a center aisle air conditioning and a parking lot that will hold all their guests. It's different if it's a member of your congregation. That's a joy, and it's a lovely thing to do. But most of the weddings the pastors are asked to do, they have no idea who the bride and groom are. Then they come and they meet with me because they're like, what do you mean we have to meet with you? What do you mean we have to do premarital counseling? I don't know. One guy called me and said, we want to like to get married tomorrow. I said, nope, I've got to do some premarital counseling. He said, you don't understand, honey. Honey? That's reverend honey to you, bud. He said, you don't understand, honey, between us, this is our ninth wedding. I, he said, nobody can tell us anything. I said, apparently there's something you didn't hear the first nine times through. But they'll come in and I'll say, guess what? We're going to, you get to pick your own scripture. They said, scripture? I don't want scripture at my wedding. Why would I read scripture at a wedding? I said, because it's a worship service. No, it's a wedding. I went to seminary. I know. It's a worship service. I say, you had to pick your own scripture. And somebody came in once, they said, we found the scripture, and they read it to me. And I said, you know, that's not from the Bible, right? They said, but it's about karma. We like the idea of karma. I said, oh, well, karma's a nice idea. They said, what you do that's good comes back to you as good. I said, no. And they said, yep, always happens that way. I said, Jesus did nothing but good his entire life, and they nailed him to a cross. But you know what lesson most people pick when I push them? They pick the wise and foolish builders because... Somebody, a 1,010 years ago, invited them to VBS, and they learned that story there. And when they really think about what their marriage is, and we talk through what marriage can be, they say, I want to be built on a rock. I want to be on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ. 
which is why we throw out the doors open for Vacation Bible School every year, and we try to get you to bring your neighbors and your friends and your kids and everybody else that you've ever known who's a little person. They come into the church and they hear the truth of God and Jesus Christ, maybe the only time in their lives. Reminds me of a woman in my last congregation who was a caretaker for one of my members, and she came to church because she brought her to church one Sunday. She had a little girl with her. Her little girl leaned over and said, Mommy, why is that lady cussing so much? She realized it was because I could sing Jesus Christ, and she'd only heard the words Jesus and Christ used as swearing. And the mother started coming to church with her little girl. The mother said, I'm agnostic at best, probably an atheist. By the time I left that congregation, mother and daughter were holy disciples of Jesus Christ because somebody said when she said, I don't know that I believe this, didn't say, well, then get out of here. They said, tell me why you think that. We invited her to share. and She ended up accepting Christ as her Lord and Savior. That's when it's a lot of fun. That's why I do this job. Bible school, I'll tell you what, girls, Bible school makes me crazy because I'm getting old for this stuff. I'll go home at night so tired, I'll be like, what happened? Do you know what? I'll be back the next day because it's my favorite week of the year because you guys get to be with me and the adults of this church, and next Sunday you're going to lead us in worship, and we're going to be here to support them. Are we not going to be here next week to support them? Or are you going to say, I don't want to go hear all these kids making noise up there? Arr, that's a childish response. You say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, I want to be here for these children. Now let's sing together the last verse of that wonderful song. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. Build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessings will come down. Oh, the blessings come down as the prayers go up. Blessings come down as the prayers go up. Blessings come down as the prayers go up. So build your house on the Lord, and make room for your neighbors' kids to build their house next to yours. Amen? Amen. Amen.